Coming up next on Secrets of Louisville Chefs, you don't want to miss this. We welcome one of Bartstown Road's hottest new chefs to Kitchen Studio. Watch what happens when mac and cheese meets the hot brown. What we're going to do here is uh, make a little roux. We're about to meet the chef who's making it and get his secret so we can make it at home. Tavis Rockwell is here from Movino, a restaurant all about small plates and big flavors. I'm going to do something different. And Tim Laird toasts the chef with his new cocktail called the Sparkling Movino. Cheers. All of that and a lot more coming your way right now. I'm Kevin Harnett and this is Secrets of Louisville Chef. Hi everybody and welcome to Secrets of Global Chefs. I'm Kevin Harned. We're at Bourbon Barrel Foods where we're about to learn some fantastic secrets from one of Louisville's best chefs. Now in kitchen studio, Chef Tavis Rockwell from Luvino will join us. The restaurant has brought new life to the spot where De La Torres used to be on Bardstown Road. It's a whole new concept these days with small plates and a big selection of wine. We're going to meet the chef in just a second, but first let's meet my co-host, America's CEO, the Chief Entertaining Officer, Tim Laird. Hello, Tim! What a fun day this is. Oh, I can't wait. I I'll tell you what. Lou Vino is so special. I'll tell you what, he's killing it on Bardstown Road. It's just amazing. I love it. Uh, I was there for brunch many times. And of course, you know why I go to brunch? Now, well, like, uh, sure, the mimosas. Bottomless mimosas <laughs> for $10. And, and then the small plates, you can actually order the entire menu, sample everything, and then do it again. I'm I mean, it's just fun. I'm excited in particular about this show because two of my favorites, mac and cheese yes. and hot brown. And so, they're coming together. I can't wait for that. The audience, are you <laughs> all heck? looking forward to this? <laughs> They are. The folks at home are. What do you say we kick off the show? Let's do it, Kevin. I'll Thank you. All way. right, everybody. It's a great day to be in Kitchen Studio. I am so excited, and here's why. Tavis Rockwell from Luvino. It's an amazing restaurant. you got to get down there. But without further ado, please bring on Chef Tavis. <laughs> how are you, buddy? Doing good. How are you? Good. Now, uh, I'll tell you what. Mac and cheese. Hot brown, mm -hmm. two incredible dishes, and you're putting them together. Putting them together. Wow. Got All some right. uh, got some onions rendering down right now, and once they uh, start to get that color that we're looking for, that nice brown color, what I do is I actually uh, deglaze with a little white wine. Beautiful. Just to pull that color off the bottom of the pan, all the flavor. All those flavors that are down there on those uh, oh, yeah, onions. Oh yeah, just delicious. Beautiful. So and then once that starts to dry up. We're gonna add some butter, because who doesn't like butter? Nice. Everybody likes butter, right? Anybody? Anybody <laughs> not like? This is whole butter, not margarine. Yeah, Unsalted, dull. delicious. Yeah, why would you do that? I have, is margarine, I don't even know what margarine is. <laughs> I think it's fake. <laughs> what we're gonna do here is uh, make a little roux. So what a roux is, is we're gonna make the, you know, the thickening agent for the Mornay that we're making. Oh, of Every, course, the classic Mornay for We're making a, a yep, classic style of Mornay. The only thing is, I'm putting smoked Gouda in mine. That's going to add a lot of flavor too. It, than a traditional. It adds uh, a lot of flavor. It's Mornier. So then what we do is we add a little bit of flour here, and we're going to cook this until it looks like a kind of a wet sand. That's the secret then, you're looking for. Wet yep, sand. And you have to get some flour on your cooking. <laughs> yeah, that wet why sand. Do you, why do you look at me when you say that, Tim? Yeah. <laughs> All my food turns out like that. Oh. So, usually, so this usually is what you're going for. It's going to look like this. That is wet sand. Wet sand. All you need is a deck or your margarita. There you go. <laughs> yeah, right. go with the wet Welcome sand. Welcome to the beach. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> and then, while this is sitting here cooking for a second, because you want to get some of that raw flour taste out you're of there. Right. So you're going to cook this just for a minute. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. And then I have a cream and milk mixture here. I do half and half. Okay. You make not, your own half Not and your half. normal half and half. This is <laughs> I was say, you might half that. whole milk, half heavy whipping cream. Oh. There's a, a few cloves in here and a bay leaf. Oh, nice. So it you know, adds that traditional flavor to the, to the Mornay. So once this starts to uh, dry up, now it's looking a little more like drier sand. <laughs> it is. I don't know why I look straight at you as well. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to add this. Whoop, make sure that bay leaf gets Get in the there. Bay leaf and the cloves go in, just a couple of cloves. Mm -hmm. And then I'm actually going to move it back here. The thing is, this takes more time than we have. So I just wanted to show you how to get it going. So we could actually start this at home, but it takes a while. It to takes actually... a little while. You, you're going to want to bring it up to a simmer and let it sit for a minute, and you'll okay. see it starting to thicken. What we're going to do now is, I also roasted off a turkey breast. 
you can get whatever kind of turkey breast you want. You could actually at home get uh, deli turkey. They'll actually, you know, they'll cut it as thick as you want. Oh, yeah. You get a couple slabs of turkey and then chop it up. What we're going to do is put some of that in this pan right here. Get it starting to warm up. And then another thing, rendering bacon. What I did is cook off the bacon. Usually you do it in the oven. You can do it in the oven on a sheet tray. Um, 350 degrees, it takes about 16 minutes. Keep an eye on it. And then uh, once it cools down, chop it up. Beautiful. And that's you an can easy do, way to do bacon. I mean, it really is. That's on yeah. the sheet tray. There you do you go. elevate it all, put a little... Uh, uh, you can put it on a roasting rack, you know, that okay. has the yep. ripples in it and let some of the grease drop down below. I like, I like to season at this point. And you know what's nice is you can indulge because, again, you, you, you serve uh, just little sample serving sizes. So yeah. actually, you know, have fun. Mm -hmm. Don't and worry about it. That's what you encourage. You come in with uh, someone else or three people, and you actually get, like, five to six things. And then you can just sit there and share it. Everybody gets a side plate, and you take a scoop of the mac and cheese, and then here comes a Brussels sprout salad or a wrap date or something, and you grab one of those and enjoy that as well. And then uh, the Mornay... Um, once it thickens up, you can save it or you know put it in the fridge for the next day if you're planning meals. But I'm gonna wow. add that in here. Man. That is oh, thick. Oh yeah. Look at that. Thick deliciousness. Oh my gosh. Oh, I almost didn't tell you the most important thing. Once it thickens up and starts to cool, you're actually gonna add your cheese. I have uh, smoked Gruyere. I'm gonna put some on top of this mac and cheese, but you can you add some into this as into well. Into the uh, mm -hmm. uh, sauce. And then you're gonna want to strain this through. A, a sieve of some okay, sort sure. to pull out those uh, cloves and that little bit of uh, bay leaf. Bay leaf yep. and anything else. Yep. So we're going to let that Mornay start to warm up a little bit. And then I wasn't going to uh, insult anybody and teach you how to make uh, macaroni. <laughs> so I went ahead and did this ahead of time as well. Hey, just read the box. <laughs> no, well, no, I was, uh, no. was going to say, you could just read the box, but I would go a little less than the box because you're oh, going to okay. put this back in the oven. Oh, that's great. So you don't want to overcook macaroni. Right. So, so actually, go, it's cooked ahead of time, but yep, under three quarters, a yeah, yeah, usually three quarters, because you're going to cook it a little more. And then what I do is I take this and put it into my mouth. <laughs> we're Immediately, gonna, we're going to get there. <laughs> we'll get there. God, that looks fantastic. And then you know the the one part about the hot brown that's just kind of funny is there's always tomato. Right. You know that you got to make it healthy in some way. <laughs> that's what. That's the. That's delicious. The, that's why the tomato's there. And then on top of the tomato, I put some panko breadcrumbs just for a little crispiness here. And you throw this in the oven. Let it get nice golden brown. Okay. And delicious. Kind of just like a hot brown that goes back into the oven. It goes back into the oven. Oh. And you're it? gonna let that cook for. Probably takes about 10 to 15 minutes. This okay. is at 350. All right. But you know, once again. Talking about the magic of television. Yeah, here. so anyway, 10 minutes later, uh, here we so, are. <laughs> good. 10 minutes later, uh, wow, bring this there out. it is. Beautiful. And you have Yo, delicious hot brown there mac and it cheese. Is. That looks incredible. Wow. You want to eat it? Uh, yeah. It looks uh, incredible, doesn't it? It, it looks <laughs> absolutely. Are you kidding me? But it looks incredible. You know, the big question. What's it taste like? Right. When we come back, we'll take a taste and we'll let you know how Tavis did. We're coming back with more Secrets of Louisville Chefs when we come back. Foods. We are here with one of Louisville's great chefs, Tavis Rockwell from Louvino, and we've whipped up something. Well, I shouldn't even say we because it's really Tavis that's whipped this up, but we have the chance to uh, see how well it turned out. Katie's here. Nice to see you. Good to see you. You're one of these awesome studio audience members we have, and you have a chance to take a taste. Are you excited about this? I'm very excited. It smells delicious. Yeah, well, they feature all of these small plates. This is just one. It was where the mac and cheese meets the hot brown. Take a taste. Let's see how he did. From Luvino on Bardstown Road, two of my favorites. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you hear that, you know it's like, mmm, that's good. That's yeah. really good. Really good? Yep. All right. Thank Katie, thank you for taking a thank taste. You. Normally we would send this back and say, oh, enjoy and share. But do you mind if I if I ask my co-host Tim Laird to take a taste? Tim? <laughs> I can thank you, Kevin. Let's see. Let's let's take a taste, Let's Tim. do it. Uh, this looks what just What was your so favorite part, Katie? Tell us what you yeah. tasted while we take a while taste. While we take a taste I here. like the cheese, but then you get all the bacon and just mm. delicious. 
Like really mm. delicious. Yeah. You make, you wow. make that mmm sound. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> that is fabulous. Oh, oh man. my gosh. All right, here you go. You can take right. it back. Right. Thank you very much. We appreciate you sharing that with us. And, wow. thank, and thank you, Kevin, for keeping around for yeah. <laughs> one of the days. How cool that was, was good. That? That, that was, was delicious. delicious. And you've made a signature cocktail for Luvino. I did. This is uh, what I call the sparkling Luvino and a couple inspirations behind it. I'm going to start out with a little bit of Corbel Champagne. And the reason uh, I thought about this drink, because at uh, Luvino, they have for $10, we talked about it earlier, a bottomless mimosa. So uh, that's fun. So anyway, I thought I'd start nice. with a, a little Corbel Champagne. Well, anytime you start with Corbel, you know it's going to be good. Oh, right? absolutely. And then uh, to that, kind of the uh, Lou portion of it, I'm going to use a little bit of Chambord, which is a uh, uh, French blackberry liqueur. So that's kind of the tie-in from Louisville uh, to France. So that's kind of the, the Lou portion of this. So we got a great color, about too, About a, sure. a quarter ounce of Chambord. Uh, on board black raspberry liqueur. Now, if I stop here, this is a classic Cure Royale. I mean, th this is it. But uh, I'm going to do something different uh, and make a light cocktail, uh, something to stretch it out a little bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, fresh lemonade to that, just a, a couple ounces to kind of give it a nice little color to it. Wow. And there it is. Um, we could do a little lemon peel uh, for a garnish, kind of something different. I like the zest that actually goes in too. So let me give that a squeeze, just like that. You're Boom. not squeezing the lemon, you're just squeezing the rind. Right, the, it, uh, the, the zest, skin. the zest, you bet. The uh, outside of the rind, just like that. And perfect, give that a little squeeze, that is gonna add a little bit more flavor to it. There it is, nice. the sparkling Luvino. Let's see how we did, Kevin, yes. cheers. Wow, how's that? That's great. What's it taste like? Well, another. Another! <laughs> It was very good. Mm. Light, refreshing, a little bit of that black raspberry in there. And the lemon adds just some brightness to yeah. it, I think. Tavis may want to take this one and take it back to the restaurant. Uh, maybe, maybe that'll be one that uh, can be the bottomless Luvino. bottom Luvino. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. Anyway, I'm excited. How about uh, Tavis Rockwell, well, everybody? Let's bring him back in right. because if it's by any indication that the mac and cheese were met the hot brown, I can't see who we're going to meet. Can't wait to see who we're going to meet next. And this is a dish. And not normally, or normally I don't like Brussels sprouts. I had this there. I now like Brussels sprouts, but only this Everybody way. Everybody thinks of Brussels sprouts where grandma opened a can and dumped it out and it was more like sauerkraut, those little balls <laughs> oh. of canned, yeah. They just gave it a bad rap. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're doing it a little different. I'm gonna start off by making the vinaigrette. We start off with shallots and garlic and then vinegar. This vinegar is actually champagne vinegar. Oh, nice. So we're gonna start with the champagne vinegar. Kind of fits the theme to the cocktail. And yeah, a little bit, yeah. Tim will be trying to make a drink out of that yeah. in a minute if you yeah. keep saying that. He might. It yeah. probably, I mean, we could, I yeah. Know, I don't know. Uh, and then we're going to put cilantro, stems and all, straight in the blender. Just the whole thing. Boom. Whole thing. Stems and all, straight in. Shake Just them down in there a little bit. And then what a lot of people don't know, and it might surprise you, is that this salad that everyone loves so much is actually vegan. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot of times I'd use egg yolks to help make the emulsification happen. But um, here I'm using Dijon mustard, where the pectin that's in the Dijon mustard well, helps the emulsification. That emulsion, where it comes together, thickens it up. Exactly. And it stays together, I guess, mm -hmm. right? That's the thing. We're going to move over to the blender here. All right. If I can, you know, make sure I can figure this thing out. Well, you know, I've never used a blender for food before. So this, <laughs> <laughs> this is a, an interesting crazy, thing. Right? It's like, this is a juicer. Yeah. I can well, probably use it. Look at you. Look at that. You want to get your cilantro nice and ground up, and you want to start to see um, the shallots ground up and all of those kinds of things. You bet. And then we're going to add in, it's probably right around a tablespoon of this Dijon mustard, actually. So squeeze the rest of this lime in here, and then we're going to turn it back on for a second. And now, my secret to this uh, dressing is actually a little bit of sugar. It helps the sweetness and the lime come out, and it helps uh, not make that champagne as intense. It just adds nice flavor right there. All yeah, right. and that wasn't a lot, just a little bit. Just a little bit of sugar. It was a secret, Tim. It that was, was a secret. That was my secret. That's right. <laughs> and then we'll start drizzling in uh, a little bit of, um, it's just a blend oil. Okay. It's an olive oil and vegetable blend. Kind of half and half? Or? Kind of pretty much half and half, yeah.
So then once you get that blended up, we're gonna add just a little bit of sugar, or we already had the sugar, a little bit of salt to it with sea salt. Okay. I was glad that top was on. Here yeah, me too. It was already trying to come out of there, wasn't it? <laughs> Mike. It's not a very sneaky ninja. This is your vinaigrette. Well, exactly. I hate to interrupt us here, but we have to take a quick okay. break. This is just the beginning. Tavis Rockwell from Luvino coming back to finish the dish when we come back on Secrets of Little Chefs. We'll be right back. Foods, you're watching Secrets of Louisville Chefs, where we're learning some of the great secrets from Tavis Rockwell down at Luvino. If you've not been to Bardstown Road, you might want to give it a consideration. Uh, we're learning some wonderful things. Tim, you've had a chance to take a taste of both so far, and we're not even finished with the second one, and you're I like know. two thumbs this up. This is great. Delicious. Lots of flavor going on. I'll tell you what, Tavis does it all. So we're going to finish up this incredible dish, and uh, I can't yeah. wait. We but left I everybody with the vinaigrette. That was the first step yep. down, but we've yet to see the... Um, Next part, which is kind of that part that so many people don't like, the Brussels sprouts. But yep. you say you're going to change that. I'm going to change it right now. And then uh, what I'm going to do, actually, just get a pan nonstick is great because they're not going to stick exactly, right? <laughs> so a little bit of the uh, oil you that you use to make the vinaigrette works great. That in half here. and half, right? That half and half little oil right here. And it's already warm, actually. So you take your Brussels sprouts, and these are not um, blanched or anything. All I did was take the Brussels sprouts and quartered them. Okay. And you're gonna put them straight into the oil. Oh, nice. All right. So, and just be careful. Like in the, in, in the <laughs> what's kitchen. Gonna oh, what's gonna happen next? In yeah. the kitchen, we start to say like bombs away or hit the deck. When you're yeah. starting to do a lot of these, you'll see. They just like to pop and crackle a lot. Oh, they do. There's just a lot of moisture in them. So we're gonna get some Brussels sprouts in the pan right here. And I actually like to flip them face down so you can start to get a, a caramelization. On the, a, on a the nice white sear. Yeah, the, exactly. Thick you might want to use tongs. Sprouts. I mean, it's a little warm in here. <laughs> yeah. Or something But like I that. do this a lot. Hey, chef's fingers work just as good as tongs. Uh, we we call them our, our flesh tongs. Yeah. <laughs> With the oil. Yeah. So then I'm actually going to season these a little bit right now because this helps bring yeah. some of that moisture out. So we're actually going to cap this with another pan for a second. And then we're going to talk about Sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes, I love. And um, if everyone, anyone's been into the restaurant recently, they've seen that it was corn. I had roasted sweet corn on this dish. And that's because it was corn season, amazing right. corn season. We're switching that to sweet potatoes right now. So I'm gonna, for the first time, show everyone the sweet potato dish. Wow. But, um, oh, how about that? Oh, here's the, another secret. Another, another secret. secret. But all I did with these, uh, another thing that takes a second is um, wash the sweet potato, Okay. peel it, and slice it into planks and then chop it into, they don't have to be perfect. Okay. So that, like and that this. gives you the nice cu yeah, cube Yeah, the little cubes, a little bit. yeah. Okay. And then you put just a little olive oil on those and you roast them in your oven at 350 until they're fork tender. And that probably doesn't take too long. Doesn't take as long small, as you would think, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Diced. Fairly quick, uh, probably 10, 15 minutes. Great. So I went ahead and did that for us. And these are going to be in place of the corn, like I was saying. And this was great. You're keeping everything in season, whatever's fresh. You're, yeah. you're incorporating into your small plate. Exactly. And, and then the other secret of this dish, and it's really not that big of a secret, but the, uh, <laughs> the hot peppers that are in them are just cherry peppers. Oh, okay. You can get them at, at Kroger or Costco or things. whatever. They're delicious. And the only, uh, the only thing you have to do with these is take the stems off and slice them up. We're going to do that in just a second. We're going to look in here at our Brussels sprouts. If you look, I'm going to give it a flip. See that caramelization? The caramelization, the caramelization. Right, where they, you had them on that side, and mm -hmm. they really have. And then another secret, I brought this uh, really good Louisville water. <laughs> going to put a little bit of that in there to steam. And then uh, we're going to reheat these. Perfect. So you're going to throw your sweet potatoes in at this point and put the cat back on. By the way, that's our secret to our bourbon here is the Louisville water. Louisville water. Li limestone in it. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing. You know, we have the best water around. I love water. No question. Whether you're cooking or making bourbon. <laughs> and then what we're going to do now is take the stems off these guys. And like I said, this is not, not hard to do at all. And we leave the seeds and everything. You're just going to slice them up. I do like these peppers. I mean, they're just oh, they're, a lot of they're flavor. They're not too cooked. hot, but no. they're they're kind of sweet. They have a little bit of heat. You know and they, we leave the seeds and everything in there. You know what they go great in, too, is Bloody Mary's. Oh, yeah. A great garnish for a bloody. <laughs> well, and the other thing is you can save the juice that's in here and yeah. use that for other things as well. Oh, I never would have like, thought of that. Like the uh, the marinated uh, hoe cake steak that we have on the menu, the, the hoe cakes, we use the cherry juice 
the pickled cherry pepper juice in oh. that. So it's another secret. Now, you don't have to give all the secrets away. I'm giving I, them all away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's the premise of the show. So you're actually following directions. How about that? So now we have nice caramelized. And we're going to just throw these peppers in here. Give those a little toss. And this is on the menu as a warm Brussels sprout salad. Okay. It doesn't have to be piping hot. If you want to do this and put it on a tray while you're, you know, about to serve dinner or something, sure. it doesn't have to be extremely hot. Room temperature if you Room want. Room temperature. Uh, I mean, so yeah, it's just a warm Brussels sprout salad. I'll this is not that. your grandma's Brussels sprout. No. This, this is, is not her Brussels sprout salad. No. Then what we're going to do is There's put incredible dressing. A vinaigrette in there. Or vinaigrette, I should say. It's a dressing. It is a dressing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a vinaigrette. Or dressing. Then what I do here is um, just garnish it with a little fresh cilantro. And you can serve it on whatever plate or dish you want. I'm just going to leave it in the saute pan because it's warm That's, Brussels sprouts beautiful. Out. That is great, Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Incredible. Oh. And, you want to try it? Yes, I do. You know what? This, <laughs> this looks so good. Dive in. Chef, you don't mind if we... Uh... Now, Tim, he admitted up front, and everybody heard this, that he wasn't a fan of Brussels sprouts right. until you've... Fix this Converted dish. me over. Try it. Okay, Let's I will. I Look, did. I've got one of the peppers there, a little bit of the uh, sweet potato, uh, sweet potato mm -hmm. as well as the Brussels sprout. Yeah. Oh wow. I mean, which that is, has so much flavor. Which Kevin. is better, the mac and cheese or the Brussels sprout? Oh come on. It's like, <laughs> it's like ask, asking parents, what's your favorite child? Well, uh, let's see. I'm telling you, both are. Well, think about Brussels well, sprouts. Glad you didn't you decide because I'm going to have to take a taste now. Okay, do. Isn't it a nice well, flavor? Cool. Really, it is. Not a great flavor. Oh, and they're still kind of crisp. That that adds the yep. it doesn't get skunky. Like a lot of people think of Brussels sprouts when they're overcooked. No, they do. Yeah, right. They yeah. get like almost a little skunky or sour tasting, well, and that's, that's what, what you don't Brussels like. Sprouts, yeah. This is absolutely fabulous, and the sweet potato adds a nice little texture to it, a little flavor to it. This Excellent. is absolutely outstanding. So, Come in, try three or four things, let people know where you are. We're at sixteen oh six Bardstown Road, Luvino. Come and see us. Do we need reservations or? Uh, we actually don't take reservations except for parties of five or more. Okay. And those are limited. It's first come, first serve. Um, tables move uh, not as fast as you would think as people are sitting around and, you know, drinking and having multiple plates. And reordering. And reordering. But you can actually come and, you know, check in and, you know, walk up and down the streets and we'll call you when your table's almost ready as well. So. Oh, great idea. Absolutely fabulous. I'll tell you what, uh, you're just killing it over there. It's wonderful. Congratulations on Thank all you. your successes uh, to you and your uh, chef wife as well, the pastry <laughs> chef and everything else. But. Gosh, keep it going, Chef. Uh, so, so glad much. to have you, and, and congratulations. We'll Excellent. probably see you again later today over at Lavino. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate everybody watching, Tim. We thank our sponsors, as always, Cisco sure of Louisville, the Beef Council from the Kentucky Beef Association, as well as Universal Linens. Thanks to our great studio audience who is here today. They're going to have a chance to take a taste. If you're looking for the recipes, find them online, newlocaltv.com. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harnett. We'll see you next time on Secrets of Louisville Chefs. That is very good.